It's amazing that on this feast of the Holy Family that I discovered this morning even some of the national TV networks appear to be honoring the feast. Because as I was getting ready to come in this morning, on one of the channels they were showing that um, that family movie, the one where, you know, it just stresses so much how important family unity is. What was the name of that film? Oh yeah, The Godfather. <laughs> so there are families and then there are families. But <clears throat> family is not easy, like I need to tell you that. We all know that. I'm reminded of that every time whenever we hear the the confessions of the young children. Invariably, there are two that they confess far more than anything else. One, I fought with my siblings. Two, I didn't listen to my parents. It's tough to adjust, to go beyond yourself. Remember, it's important to be cooperating and contributing for the sake of, of everyone. And I'm not sure it gets all that much easier as we get older. There always seem to be challenges to us to deal with, with family. And my gosh, especially, you know, in these last, what, nine or ten months where we've been really forced to spend even more time in togetherness. We've been challenged to have our patience strengthened. You know, and they talk about how when there's any kind of a change in the routine among family members, how difficult it can be to adjust. This, um, this appeared a while back in the Chicago Daily News. This woman writes, I've heard of the problems newly retired men and their wives face when confronted by too much togetherness. And I was always amused at the way they so often get on each other's nerves. I never thought I'd face such a problem, but it's been two months now, and matters around here are pretty bad. I ran out of patience that first Monday. There we were, the two of us. Dave busied himself by following me around, inquiring into my household routines. I tried to be pleasant, but my surly nature surfaced when he asked, why don't you vacuum all the way under the bed? I have tried to interest him in any number of activities with little success. I even shouted the merits of daytime TV. What you really need is a job, I told him, knowing he'd never be able to find one at his age. Yesterday was typical. Dave and I spent the morning together, as always now. He sat looking out the window for a while, sighing intermittently. Then he came into the kitchen when are we having lunch, he wanted to know. This at 8.30. We went lockstep to the bedrooms where he watched me make the beds. To his query, what should we do now? I snarled, how about a duel with sabers? 
A lengthy discussion followed of my system of sorting wash. I don't like to sort wash, much less talk about it. The situation is getting to me. You'd think that someone with so much intelligence, someone I truly love, would not be so totally annoying when faced with a change in routine. Ah oh well, my problem won't last forever. Next fall, Dave will be starting kindergarten. That's called being set up in case you weren't quite sure. But even though family life may be difficult, there's just something about being willing to put in that kind of love and that kind of patience and many times that kind of forgiveness that can bring out the very best in us or create the very best inside of us. Those of you who are parents, I, I wouldn't begin to understand what your parent heart is like. But I want to offer this next one to you as, as a tribute. The love that you have. Um, I'm not sure if you even realize it and maybe maybe in this story you can ask yourself how would I answer that question in terms of my kids a mother lost her soldier son the news came to her in telegrams from the war he had fallen fighting bravely at the head of his squad. The mother was inconsolable. She prayed, Oh, that I might see him again, if only for five minutes, just to see him. An angel appeared to her and said, Your prayer will be answered. For five minutes, you will see him. The mother's tears turned to momentary joy. The angel continued, but think a little. He was a grown man. There are 30 years to choose from. How would you like to see him? The mother paused and thought. Would you see him, said the angel, as a soldier? bravely dying at his post? Would you rather see him again as on that day he graduated and stepped up to the stage to give his valedictory speech? Or maybe you'd prefer to see him as the nursing baby you held in the first months of his life. She reflected in silence for a few moments and then slowly the mother said, no. If I only had him for five minutes, I would have him as he was that one day when he ran in from the garden to ask my forgiveness for being naughty. He was so small and so unhappy and the tears were making streaks down his little face that was smeared with garden dirt. And he flew into my arms with so much force that it was almost painful. The one thing that the mother wished above all to recapture was the moment when her son needed her. There's nothing more moving in life than to hear someone say, I need you. I cannot do without you. So, all of us 
to our members of families, to all of us who have families. Keep the season going, I'll say it again. Merry Christmas. God bless you and your holy families. Please stand. And so as we profess our faith, I ask you once again, do you believe in God, the Father of all people, the creator of our world, our universe, and the promise of our future? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, Son of the Virgin Mary, who though he was innocent, was crucified and died to conquer death and bring salvation to all? And do you believe that God has raised him to the glory of resurrection and made him Lord of all life? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit who calls us to be the body of Christ, building God's kingdom in the midst of suffering and despair? And do you believe that the power of this spirit will transform